Hi, my name's Michael Rhodes, and this is the fifth in my series of short videos talking not so much about these times, but talking about how to survive them, how to live through them. I don't like the word survive. That sounds like it's fearing. I'd rather say how to live through them in a beautiful way. <clears throat> One of the things I've learned as a spiritual teacher over the many years I've been doing this is that People have problems. They all come to me, or a lot of people come to me with their problems. And what I've learned is there is no such thing as a human problem. Yes, I mean you, even though you feel you've got plenty. There's no such thing as a human problem. There's only a lack of self-love. And when you're loving yourself, truly, problems don't come in your life. Problems are caused by us. We always see problems as outside interference in our lives. But we're the creator. There is nothing outside self. There's nothing outside of you. Not as a physical body, but as a being. An immortal, eternal being. And there's nothing outside of self. As I often say, you are the world, you are the universe. And so it's highly unlikely that there's something going to come from beyond the universe just to mess up your life. So we do this, and I've done my share of it, I've no doubt about that. We do this by the way we think, and by the way we use our emotions. And generally when you think, thought precedes emotions. And so generally when you think, emotions accompany it. The emotions sort of we tend to dismiss. But thought without emotion is not at all powerful. Thought with emotion is very powerful. So what is happening now? Have suddenly people got more problems? No, nobody's got more. But what it's doing, we're having time to reflect at home on the problems we have. I hear, for instance, that in China, there are queues going to the divorce courts. So did this um, coronavirus bring on divorces? Of course it didn't. They were in bad relationships. They were in relationships that um, were not productive. Well, not creative. A relationship is where two people are growing. Two people. I grow you. You grow me. And we do that through the nurturing energy of love. And so all it's showing is that these problems when you, that we have now are being accentuated by the time we're in. They're being magnified by the times we're in. And they haven't brought new problems. I mean, if you can't be shut in a house and happy in your own company, for a week or two, then then we have well, then we have a problem, and that problem is in our relationship with self. The truth is, of course, we're metaphysical beings, and so although your body can be imprisoned, that doesn't mean to say that you have to be imprisoned. And even though your body is shut in now, maybe about a month has gone by, and your body is shut up a lot more, that doesn't mean you have to be. Because if you sit down and move into a meditative state, you can move out of body. And you can do it awake or asleep. You can move um, out of body. We've got the idea that we're locked in bodies. Your body was never designed to be a prison. It's designed to simply be able to express um, your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and soul growth on a physical, emotional, and mental level. So what do we do about this as regards to these times? And really, in the end, this is one of the reasons I gave up counselling, basically, is because all we do is I keep coming back to the same answer. What you do is look at your focus. And if your focus is into fear, then you will attract more to fear. If your focus is into love, you will focus more to love, which is going to work. I mean, it's a no-brainer. And so we tend to live our lives in a way, as I said, following the old program, the program of conditioning, which use fear in our, throughout our lifetimes. Fear has been the uh, preceded fight, flight or freeze syndrome. And that was all based in survival. Now we should be getting to realize that we are eternal beings. So what is there to survive? 
every time I read the newspaper, so many lives lost. No, I said it the other week, you don't lose lives, you can lose bodies. But if you've had 10,000 incarnations, 10,000 bodies, the only time you're attached to them is while you were in them. You're not terribly attached now, but you have attached to the one you're in. And that's okay. None of this is bad or wrong. But it's very difficult to get through those problems when only, when all you see is the little picture of one life and you now. If you were to see one life as eternity and you now living in the moment, it would work for you because in the moment there's never any danger. If you're in the moment, there are never any lies or deceit. If you live from your heart, you live with a clarity and an insight and a deeper knowing that your brain seldom ever gets close to because the brain works in a different way. Whole brain works very nicely for us. Left brain dominant only, it sees a different picture. And so we're no longer in balance with life. We're no longer in balance with ourselves. We are no longer in harmony or in tune. And none of this is wrong or bad. What this time is revealing, how badly it works in our life. It doesn't work for us. We need to do things that work for us. And what works for us is to be in harmony. How do you be in harmony with the world? It begins, you are the world. So once again, we're back to the same place. You need to be in harmony with yourself. How do you love other people? They are you. There's only one humanity. It starts off by loving yourself. And everything that your thoughts tell you about yourself is probably a lie. Nobody judges themselves anything less than harshly. There are very few people. Today, I can look at myself lovingly. No problem at all. But I didn't always do that. I, exactly as you are probably doing, I've been through all the harsh self-criticism. I, I grew up on self-criticism. When our parents criticize us, they teach us how to criticize ourselves. So many people use the same words in their thoughts, exactly the same words that their parents repetitively used. They, it doesn't work for you. And so you need a different program, and that program is self-appreciation. And if you're going to love yourself, it means you're going to appreciate yourself. It means you're going to accept yourself. So if you have a problem with the word love, how do I do that? Look at it as self-acceptance, unconditional self-acceptance. I am who I am. I am as I am. And the way I am is okay. I can live with this. I'm okay. I don't need anybody's approval, including my own, or my parents, or my siblings. I don't need any approval for me to be who I am, the way I am. You will know if there's something that needs to be polished off a bit, or a little place that's a bit shadowy. You'll know that, and you do that lovingly. And so once again, we come back to the core message of everything I say. It's about choosing love, choosing to love yourself, choosing to love who you are, where you are, and who you are with. And you just put that into place and your focus becomes love and you become loving. You'll find the problems you have melt away, just like ice in the sun. They melt away and you realize, what were those problems? And those problems have gone because they were never real. They were just you expressing a lack of self-love. Put the love in. Go over time. Love yourself.